Morning, guys. I was on um, Blender Chat earlier, and somebody had created this model in sculpt mode from an icosphere by just cutting out the bits that they wanted to cut out. Now, obviously, they don't like the result. We've got terrible topology, and also it's causing this really bad shading artifact. So I'm going to attempt to fix this model and also show how he could have avoided this problem in the first place using a better technique to cut out those shapes in sculpt mode. And if you'd like to support the channel, but more importantly, make your cycles renders massively faster, then you can get Turbo Tools version 3 from 3d-illusions.co.uk. So let's get started. We can, to an extent, fix the shading artifacts. If we turn on Shade Smooth, and we'll go into the Data Panel under the Normal section and just say Auto Smooth, and that will fix the bits it can. But because these edges here, going to uh, Wireframe, are so close together, there's no way that the uh, Shade Smooth algorithm can make these appear smooth. They're just too close together. So what we need to do is salvage the bits we can from this model and try and fix it from there. So I'm going to go into edit mode, number three, to go into face mode. I'll select this face and I'll do select linked flat faces and I'll increase the sharpness so it selects the bits I want and do control I, X, F to delete the faces. Now we've still got the problem, if we go into edit mode, of all these vertices which are really close together and are unsmoothable. If I try and smooth this, it's going to just go into the model wherever there's an edge leading in. Uh, let me show you. So A, Q, select boundary loop, and then I'll try and smooth this. You'll notice the bits that have got an edge leading into the model are going to get pulled along that edge. We don't want that, so we just want it to smooth the other bits. How can we select just the vertices that don't have an edge leading into the model? Well, luckily, we can see this one here has got one, two, three edges connected to it, whereas all the others have only got two edges connected, one, two. So we can select one of these and do Shift-G, and then we can say select similar with the amount, same amount of connecting edges. And there you go. So it's selected all those vertices, and now if we try and do a smooth, you can see that is indeed allowing us to smooth those out. Right, but it's still not very good, because those vertices that we can't include in the smooth operation are left looking a bit jagged. What we're going to need to do is remesh it. So let's leave that like that. Let's try the remesher that comes with Blender. So we've got under the data panel, the beam mesh option. Let's just make sure all the faces are pointing in the right direction. They are, so it's all blue. Just to make sure, I'll go into edit mode, select faces, A, shift N, and that will uh, recalculate the normals just to make sure everything's pointing outward. And then we'll go into quad remesh. And quad flow remesh, make sure we preserve the boundary loops. We don't want symmetry. And we'll click OK. And it's saying that there's the normals pointing the wrong way or it's non-manifold. Non-manifold means you've got sort of holes in the geometry. Now, there aren't any holes in this geometry to the best of my knowledge. And the actual problem is that some of the vertices are too close together on that border. So again, Q, select loops, select boundary loops, M, distance, and we'll just join some of those together. Come back out of edit mode. And then we'll try quadriflow remesh again. And now it will work. I'm not quite sure why it does that. Uh, but the problem is, even though it works, it's rubbish. The quadriflow remesher in Blender is absolutely terrible. So what I'd tend to do instead is use the Exercise quad remesher, which is by the same guy that wrote the quad remesher for ZBrush. So it's really good. I'll just click on remesh really fast and then you see it's finished already and it's given us not too much of a bad result and what we can do from this point is go into sculpt mode choose the mesh filter and then we can just try and smooth it a little bit like so that's a pretty good result got a bit of an issue there we'll undo the smooth and we'll just get rid of this Control x then if we go into sculpt mode and smooth again, that will work. Basically, the reason it wasn't working is because it didn't have, go into edit mode, it had 
a uh, there was a, a vertex here, but it didn't have an edge leading into the model. And if a vertex doesn't have an edge leading into the model, it can't be smooth along the border. So let's just have a quick look at this. This is looking pretty good. And we don't want this sharp here. So let's number two, a right click and say clear sharps. Get rid of that. Now we do have a bit of a problem here, which I'll come to later, uh, whereby the edges aren't all leading into the model. We've got diagonal edges, which are going to cause problems if we try and add any bevels. But we're going to fix that now. Number three, A, and we're going to select all the faces, and then we're going to do a Alt E to extrude faces along the normals. And then we can extrude it as much as we want. And let's try and find that area that I pointed out before here. So if we try and bevel this, let's select um, this face on the inside, Q, select linked flat faces again. So we've got all of the faces selected apart from, in fact, we haven't got this one selected. That'll be problematic. So I need to turn that off a bit, make sure we've got them all. So if I try and bevel this now by doing a control I, select the inverse, which will be the uh, inside area here. And then I do Q, select loops, select boundary loop. And I'll try and do a control B for a bevel. You can see it's not going to work without causing problems here on this edge where it's going to overlap. Not so bad there, in fact. Let me try and find a better example. So here's a good example of a problematic area if we bevel this. Now you can see straight away, because of the uh, edges being so close together and pointing diagonally instead of going straight in, we can't bevel very easily. So what we need to do is select this inside set of faces again. And this time we're going to do Alt E, extrude along normals, and bring those out. Now you'll notice when we extrude outward, all of the edges now point in. So we've no longer got any of these diagonals really close to the edge. And basically that means we can Q, select boundary, uh, select the boundary loop again from the selection and control B. And this time we're not going to get any problems of uh, overlapping edges or the bevel trying to go over diagonal edges. And there you go. So that's how you would fix the original model. What I'll show you now is how we can do a much better job if we uh, avoid this in the first place. And if we want to, by the way, we can add a subdivision modifier to this. Now we've got decent topology that was generated by the quad remesher. And there you go. So subdivision modifier, and it's really smooth, there's no artifacts at all. And I'll apply that. What we can do now is create it from scratch without running into those issues in the first place. So Shift A, Mesh, I hate it how Blender does that. You know, if you press Shift A down here, Mesh, half of it goes off the screen and you can't get to it. All right, Shift A, Mesh, there we go. Let's go with a cube. It's probably better than Icosphere for topology. And we'll do Control 3, move it over here. Control A, and we're going to use a cast modifier and set it to sphere with a factor of 1. Control A. Now we've got a perfect sphere. And we go into Sculpt mode. We might actually need to give it a bit more topology. So control two, control A into school mode. And we use the draw face edge brush. And then we can start drawing different shapes on here. And what we can do then is use the mesh filter brush and set this to be relaxed face set. And just drag that across until it relaxes the edge of those face sets. And then we'll hover the mouse over the gray area where we don't have face sets. And we'll do Shift H. And then we'll go into Edit Mode, A, X, F. Alt H to unhide the rest of the model. And let's have a look what we've got. So we've got a bit of an issue here. We don't want this extra face on the edge. Number three, X, F. Delete that one. And just have a quick look around for any um, areas like that where you've got rogue faces sticking off. That looks all right. And then we'll go into face mode by pressing number three, and then we'll select everything. Alt E, extrude along normal to get the extrusion back. And then we'll select, click on the face on the inside. Q, select link flat faces again. 
and do Control I, just like this inside part. And we'll do Alt E, extrude along normals. We'll just extrude it out a little bit, and then this can control the bevel. So Q, just like loops, just like boundary loops. Control B, and then we can bevel as far as the uh, edge that we've extruded. Now if we come back out, we've got this sort of shape, shade smooth, and we're getting pretty nice results on there. Now what we could have done, of course, is remesh this before we did the um, extrude and the bevel, and that would have given us an even better result. For example, if I do Control 1 now to add a subdivision modifier, it is going to work because of that extrude we did along the inside, uh, but it's probably going to have more faces than it needs. You can see we're getting no smoothing artifacts, but we do have quite a heavy topology, unnecessarily heavy. So let me just show you now, let's go back to the point before we add that extrude. There we go. And what I want to do now is do a quad remesh. So remesh should be really quick. And then we get nice topology flowing around the shape of those borders, which will give us much better subdivision if we choose to do that. And of course, we don't have to do the, uh, the extrude and bevel in edit mode. We could do it in the modifier with the uh, solidify modifier, followed by the bevel. But just bear in mind, this is going to leave us with that problem we had before. If you've got any vertices that have got a diagonal edge leading into the model. But because we've used the quad remesher, that's less likely. Let's just turn up the number of bevel segments. Let's shape smooth. And we could add a subdivision modifier. Maybe give it two and we'll put it before the bevel. You can see that's given us a pretty nice result. Personally, I always prefer to do it in the model. So yeah, that's how you, this is how you could fix it on the left. And then to avoid all those issues in the first place, what we can do in sculpt mode is use face sets and then the mesh filter to relax the edges of those face sets so that we get a nice smooth result in the first place. So I hope that's useful. And don't forget, if you want to get much faster cycles renders and also help the channel, then you can get Turbo Tools version 3 from 3d-illusions.co.uk.